Hi everyone, I'm Taylor, I'm a teacher, and today I wanna to show you the perfect class pet. Hi everyone, welcome to Pets in a Pod. I'm Taylor, I'm a teacher. I actually teach high school, but when I say I have the perfect class pet for you, I've considered kind of what's gonna work for most situations, most grades, and I really wanted to think about the younger grades here because most elementary teachers, when they bring in a class pet, that's that student's first experience with a pet. So I wanted something that was quiet, easy to clean, small, easy to maintain, easy to hold, and more. I forgot what I've already listed off, but all of it. Perfect class pet, right? And my perfect class pet to you comes in this box. So my perfect class pet is an insect but I promise you it's not a scary insect. Um, this is something that most kids are gonna be fine handling, and especially, like I said, these younger grades, they're learning still, and this is the perfect time that even if bugs scare them, you can teach them not to be afraid. And if you're afraid of bugs, this is usually one that's, it's easy. It's an easy bug, let's be honest. I'm not a huge bug person, this is an easy bug. So what I have to show you today is the isopod. Pill bug, sow bug, Roly poly, it looks like this. This is why they're the perfect pet. This is one reason, and I'll come back to this. But the size, a lot of the times with classrooms, we don't have the space to have huge rabbit cages and huge guinea pig cages, bearded dragons, leopard geckos. And I do wanna make a point to say that as a teacher, we're setting an example to how to care for these animals. And I've unfortunately seen time and time again, people keeping in animals too small of cages. I know the pet store told you it was okay. I know somebody said I keep mine in this size of cage and they're fine. It's often, often, often too small. I've come across too small of cages too often. So as a teacher, please do like deep research. I know you know how. I know you know how to do research. So please, as a teacher, do your pets and your kids a favor and show them how to actually raise an animal. This entire thing cost me a dollar. It is latched. Um, I do recommend poking holes in the sides. This one is kind of bowed, so the airflow goes through there. That one roly poly I showed you in the beginning, he's right there. And let me zoom out. Look how much space he has. Plenty of space, so you can also give that an example to your students. Like, look how big this isopod is and look how much space I provided. You're showing good care already. And they're so easy to set up, so cheap to set up. You just need some dirt. You can usually get dirt from outside. I got um, cocoa fiber soil from the pet store that's like for reptiles and stuff, or hermit crabs, it is what it's sold for. I got some of that in the bottom and then some moss. That's it, that's the setup. You can put in bark, you can put in sticks, you can put in little fake plants, you can put in real plants. Your students have the creativity to decorate this the way they want. And that's what makes this great because they're so easy kind of like laid back pets that once you have those minimum, like the soil and moss, I would say that's kind of mandatory. Your students can decorate it the way they want. You, If you are an art teacher, you can create clay sculptures, gla glaze it, glaze the clay, or I don't know, but glaze the clay or bake it somehow so that it's solid, and then you can put the tiny clay sculptures in here. Your students could make decor for these pets if you're an art teacher or you're teaching an art section. Um, if you're teaching like architectural design, they could make landscape designs for these pets. I'm saying any teacher in any grade could use this. Little grades, back to the little grades and even middle school, like I said, they can decorate this replicating a naturalistic environment. You could teach them environments that way. You could also, when you're in the math section, for a warm up for fun, be like, hey, what's, what's the area of this? Or what's the volume of this um, container? Let's take measurements on it. You know, or let's let's measure the, the roly-poly itself. Isopods are magical. Any subject could teach them. You could even teach um, the history of an isopod, but frame it as like evolution in a way. So like um, make a timeline for when isopods came and the changes along the way, because they used to be huge way back when, and now they're tiny. Um, you can make charts of the different kinds of isopods. You could even do it, uh, again, back to art, like drawing them out coloring isopods. Um, you could do field guides with these things and there's tons of different ones. So these are perfect. You have like an unlimited number of topics you could talk about. 
Anyway, I'm bouncing around because I'm so excited. Back to care. These are great because although small, they're very easy for a small child to pick up. If you put your hand in front of one and have another hand lead behind to kind of push the isopod forward, they will crawl onto your hand and they're easy to put back. You just rest your hand and they'll fall back in. Your kids could collect their own isopods. So once you set up the container, you could go out and collect your own if you have them in the area. I ordered mine online. Mine are called dairy cow isopods, which I really like because I call them the little cows. And so students could name them as well. Um, for English classes, they could do creative writing on this animal. They're just really ideal because they're small. They don't smell. They, they're easy to take care of in containers. So another thing you could do as well is a big problem with class pets is you usually have like one for everyone to share. With these, if you do like table groups, you can have one of these at each table group. Each group could get their own isopod to care for, or each person if you wanna go all out. I mean, it's only a dollar per container and the stuff inside you could find free outside. So if you wanna spend 30 bucks to get all of your kids containers, you can. And it's that's why what makes it so amazing. And these are just awesome, awesome, awesome. So how do you take care of them? Maybe I sold you on it, you're interested. How do you take care of it? Once it's set up, like I said, the dirt and the moss is the minimum. Um, food, isopods are, are like de detritivore scavenger type of animals. Basically they eat waste and rotting matter. So leaves from the ground, like rotting leaves, you could put in here and they will eat those. And then that's what I do. And then I also supplement um, with fish food. So if you buy fish flakes, like tropical fish, fish flakes, you could sprinkle a little bit of flakes in there and they'll eat them and it's good for them. And then you could also buy algae tabs also in the fish aisle. Um, and it's perfect because it's dry, it's easy to store. Again, doesn't really smell. Students can easily take a pinch and put it in, monitor the food. It's very easy to care for these guys. Fish food's so cheap too. Like pet on a budget, come on. So feeding them is perfectly easy. Like I said, fish food, fish flakes, and dead leaves. You can also feed them like food scraps. So if a kid doesn't want like a piece of banana or they don't want the end of the banana, they can put a little bit in there. You don't want to overfeed them because you know they're they're gonna eat only what they can, but you can introduce, you know, the idea of like diet and nutrition with this as well. PE, hello, <laughs> health. So uh, you can do feeding for them as well, but yeah, fish flakes and algae tabs are what I go with and they're very easy, very cheap to maintain that way. Um, and like I said, the, the, the leaves, like rotting leaves. And then the last thing you have to do, the only thing you have to do is just make sure it stays moist. So this should never dry out. Uh, the moss should always be moist for sure and the soil ideally as well. So you always want them to have like moist areas. These are animals that like to hang out in kind of wet conditions. So just every day, you're, you're stu and that gives them something to do too, right? That's sometimes the problem with the class pet. They're all sharing the one. These need so much, right? You could feed them a little bit every day and someone could also be misting them every day. So get a little spray bottle of purified or distilled water. O open it, check if it's dry, the student sprays. And again, this, this could be something that's tracked. They could have a little log, like, did you feed it today? What did you feed it? Did you spray it down? What's the inside like? And that's it. Food, moisture, done. These are the perfect pet. And here's the nail in the coffin, if you're not convinced yet. You can leave these in your classroom over break. You don't have to take these home over break. And if, you, if a student wants to take theirs home over break, they can. Like, what's a dollar tub with some bugs in it gonna cost you if something happens, right? If they wanna take it home, they can. But that also shows them responsibility. And each student group could take, you could have tons of kids take them home, right? Depending on how many you have. And also, since they're sealed, if they accidentally get knocked off a table, like in an elementary situation, it's all still gonna be in there. And these are fine, like if they get knocked around in the soil, they'll just come back right up. And then when summer break hits, if you have long summer breaks and you don't wanna leave them over summer, on the last day of school, do a release party. Release your, your isopods into the wild because these are native to many, many places around the world. Or it, it was only a dollar to do this. Let your kids take them home. Give them a gift at the end of the year. Say you've taken care of this pet. It's survived. You've done so well. This is my gift to you. And your kids will love it and they'll probably just love it all summer and they'll come back next year and tell you they still have it. So that's my spiel. If you guys have any questions, please ask me in the comments. I'm, I love these. These are my favorite class pets. They seriously are. And there's so many varieties 
and I'm just gonna keep talking about them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I might do more class pet videos, but I don't think it gets better than this. So, see you guys next week.